Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Carradio at Citra. Uh, real quick job today, I'm not really sure what else I'm going to do, but just want to get a couple of things done. Last night I glued this ring into place. Um, I did film a wee bit of it, so here's some footage from that. Hey guys, it's James from the past. I'm just after work wanting to glue this uh, ring down and let it dry overnight. I'm if you're wondering whenabouts this is happening, I have just finished the first day of working on the Audi A6 with all the Focal Flex speakers. So just want to tonight get this ring glued into position here so that it's nice and strong. So I've got my wood glue here, PVA, that'll do it. I wonder if I should, hmm, where's my knife? Grant's got a knife here that I'll use. I just want to shorten these a wee bit. I want it to glue to the sides as well as the bottom. There we go, that'll do. Right, so now, how do I want to do this? Because we used to have a little squirty bottle for it, but I think it's got jammed. Because I really need to get it into that corner. Maybe what I should do is prop this up so it's vertical, or flat at least. There we go. Maybe if I just go real slow around it, circle. Oh, that'll do. I'm happy with that. We'll see what happens when I push this in. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I think what I will do is I'll put a subwoofer on here facing upwards to put the pressure on it once I wash this off. I've got a spare subwoofer over here. Get this. We'll set it like this to keep the pressure on. Cool. That's that done. That can dry overnight. Okay, so what I want to do today is I've got my subwoofer here. Uh, today I just want to get that in position and get the holes for them drilled and maybe some T nuts loaded in or something like that because this did come with some T-nuts but they're only M4 and I'm going to try and figure out what gauge of screw or bolt that I want to use for um, securing this in there. I do think I want to use bolts and T-nuts on the other side of the wood. Just need to figure out what gauge though. So that's what I'm doing today. So yeah, this is glued in here. It's not going anywhere now. Let's have a look. There's the mounting harbor that comes with the sub. And see these are the little M4 T-nuts that came that were already in the box. I don't know, they're a wee bit bent out of whack. I don't know if I can use them or not. But what I do need to do is figure out what, oops, figure out what gauge of bolts I can put through the actual subwoofer. So let's do that. Just, okay. So, the, the game is to figure out what size bolts I can actually fit through there. Wonder if I could use M6s, because we have a few of those. Not quite M6, M6 dust, oh, it would fit, no, it's not gonna fit. No, I need to use M5 bolts maybe, because I feel like this is an M4. I'm pretty sure it's an M4, because here's the M14. This is what was holding in the original subwoofer. Yeah, it is. I feel like these in here just way too sort of thin. Obviously I could put some washers or something but it just doesn't feel hunky enough. So I want to use some M5 bolts I think. So what I need to get myself is at least, I need to get myself at least 8 M5 T-nuts and 8 M5 bolts that will fit under here with that trim ring on. But let's uh, 
put this in place and drill the holes anyway, or mark them. Okay. Now there is pretty much zero movement in here, so I don't need to put it in position or anything. Just need to get it straight. I feel like I need to measure this to get it right, because I want to get it exactly right. That looks pretty level to me. I'm happy with that. Yep, that's good. Okay, now I can get my marker. I'll try these two. Mark these. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now I need to do the 45 ones. Five, six, seven, eight. Maybe even actually add another four, make it 12. Okay, that's what I think I've got my holes marked. Check this out. Okay, let's draw those out. Starting with a 3mm. Okay, let's vacuum that. Okay, there we go, pilot holes are drilled. Let's uh, just check they all still line up. Which I can't think of any reason why they wouldn't. They all look good to me. So now, I know since I'm doing five mil bolts, I'm definitely gonna have to go at least up to, I think a five and a half mil size bit, but then there should, there'll probably be, be a wee bit extra I need to go as well to allow for the flange of these T-nuts. Because with T-nuts, you have to have the size of the hole for the bob, then it's also the shroud bit which has to fit in. So this is more like a five mil hole for a four mil bolt, so I may have to go up to a six at some point, but I won't do that until I've got them. So I think rather than going straight to that, I might go through the four mil. Yep, let's do that. Okay, this shouldn't take long. Probably. gonna get this bit to try and blunt off the ends a wee bit since they're fraying a tad. Oh no, it's a bit sharp. I'll use Grant's countersink bit. Okay, there we go. Holes all drilled. Okay. There we go. So now all I need is some bolts and T-nuts. I'll have to do that in the weekend. got it guys and I actually got it to such a size and perfect shape that it actually is now just wedged in there and doesn't really want to fall out. I probably could if I uh, hit it hard enough from the other side but yeah it's pretty much in there. I quite like the way that looks. It looks cool. I'm happy with that. Perfectly level, almost perfectly level. Got it. With regards to screwing it in there Maybe I ought to get those factory holes, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, so here's what I got going on now, guys. I am marked the holes as best I could for where they were in here and drilled them out to like a four mil and I've got these nice screws going through and I've also put foam tape or weather stripping, whatever you want to call it, along here to kind of act as a real thin sealer. So I'm gonna try and screw this on here now. This does have a top, that is the top. So it's gonna go like that. Okay, 
Okay, now look, that's in. Not going anywhere. That looks pretty decent, I'm happy with that. Looks like I got the screws all through the factory holes anyway. Original holes. I'd say that's gonna be good, I'm happy with that. Panel done. Obviously I just need to put my speak on plug in here somewhere. Sweet. That'll do for work on the subwoofer box today I think guys, so thanks for tuning in with me. I'll catch back in, I'll, I'll check back in with you guys when I'm looking at doing uh, the T-nuts for the bolts and securing it. After that all I need to do is fiberglass and resin the inside of it, put my speak on plug in it, in it wire it up and fire away. So I'll catch you when I next work on it. Hey guys, how's it going? So it's uh, mm, got a wee bit of time. Gonna work on the subwoofer box again. I took my watch off. It's 10th today, so going forward ahead in time. Um, what I plan on doing today, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get today, but step one. Um, you guys know I want to kind of strengthen or seal up my subwoofer box a bit better because if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I've explained this before. Um, this subwoofer box is normally what is normally a Rockwell Fallscape P300-12. So normally there's like a little 300 watt subwoofer in here with an amp in the side. But and I went for this box because I really like the way it looks in my car. But it's not, in my opinion, up to the strength that I think it's going to need to be for my subwoofer. For instance, this back wall, I'm pretty sure it's quite thin MDF. The fact that it makes a bit of an echo like that and I feel like I can almost flex it with my hand it needs going to need some strengthening. So I do intend to fiberglass the inside of this box. We've got fiberglass matting there and I've bought myself some fiberglass polyester resin. Now keep in mind, I've never really done fiberglass work myself. Haven't really had to. We don't do much fiberglass stuff here at uh, AutoSound. We do mostly installs rather than fabrication. So I don't know much about fiberglassing. So thinking about that, I don't think my fiberglass work is going to be that perfect if you know what I mean so step one what I want to do is seal up the box as best as I can because in here you can see there's like these little strength based I guess pieces of MDF shoved into the corners and it's all glued in it's not very pretty but it's it, it must work I guess so what I want to do is I'm going to go along every single internal edge in here with black RTV gasket uh, silicon gasket and that's going to 100% seal it. I'll let it dry overnight. And that will do the sealing part of it. The reason I'm doing that as well as fiberglass is because I can't guarantee that my fiberglassing work and resin work is going to be that spot on and going to do the sealing work for me. So I'm going to use that because I know I, I know how to use that stuff. It's pretty easy. Um, so I'm going to use that to seal it all up and then after that's all done, I will use the fiberglass matting and resin to basically just strengthen the big flat panels and maybe a wee bit in the corners as well. And once that's done, then it will be more suitable for my subwoofer. Which by the way, if you haven't seen my other videos, is the Rockford Fosgate T1 S1 12. So 12 inch power series, uh, slimline one ohm subwoofer, which is 600 watts RMS. I've got my gloves on. I'm gonna try and quickly breeze through this ceiling thing and then I'll catch you when it's done. Okay, there we go guys. So I got, as you can see, that whole edge, that whole edge there, there the top there, that edge. The only issue is these front four edges here that I can't get to. See if I put you like this, you can see up here. I physically can't get the corking gun and all my hand, like or I can't get the glue up there. It's the same around in these corners at the bottom. Those will just have to, you know, I'm going to rely on my reasoning, I think, to make sure. I mean, they're already going to be pretty well sealed because of the fact that it's a pre-built box. But I just wanted to do this to, you know, be a bit more 100% sure. But I guess that's just going to be as good as it gets. So that's good. I'll let that dry, like, either overnight or something like that. And then the next step will be reasoning and fiberglassing the inside of the box. 
Good morning guys, how's it going? Okay, so some more time available now for me to work on my subwoofer box. You saw yesterday I, you know, did some sealing on the inside with the RTV. That's all dried up now, it's nice and rubbery, good to go. Um, today I'm hoping to get some fiberglassing work done. So I've pretty much got everything out that I need to start. I've got my box, which I have fully masked off because I don't want to get any resin anywhere on the face of this box since it's already fabricated or finished on the outside. So that's all masked up. Got my fiberglass matting, my working gloves, got like my mixing container, the epo not the epoxy, the polyester resin and the activator, a couple of measuring things, my roller for getting the bubbles out, and paintbrush. So I can't actually start doing the resining or anything or um, any coating or anything like that until Pat, my boss, gets in because I need someone else here to be able to man the shop and take calls if I'm in the middle of rolling out bubbles or painting resin on because obviously you can't really, once you've done that, just sort of pause and stop and go and do something. But for the meantime, while he's not here, what I can do is start cutting up the fiberglass matting to the shapes that I need. Um, now again, the whole purpose of this isn't necessarily to seal the box off entirely. It is already pretty well sealed considering it's a pre-made uh, box and also I've gone around and put RTV in as many places as I could. The main purpose of this fiberglass is just to kind of give it a bit more rigidity. Like um, these walls that the, the MDF that they've made this box out of is pretty thin. So I just want to make it a little bit less. As I was saying, the whole purpose of this fiberglass is just to add a bit more strength to the actual uh, sides of the box, not necessarily in the corners because if you look there's actually already these big MDF strips in the corners here which are providing strength between each side and it's all you know glued and everything together and now I've got that uh, silicon RTV there as well acting as an extra sealant preventing any air from escaping anywhere so I'm going to cut out strips of this lay them in here sort of get the right shape I'm going to do obviously this back wall the bottom the sides and the top probably. I'm not going to be able to do this front face like on the back of here I don't think because like the workability is just it's just not there. Like even if I made up a piece to fit under here and then like painted it on there it would just fall down as soon as I try and lay it on there. It just, I don't think it will work. But here's something I have to say like I have never in the five years I've worked here actually worked with fiberglass for a So I think inside of my own subwoofer box is probably a good place to start because you're not going to see it if it doesn't work then it's fine and there's room for error so i think this is probably the best place of any to have my first experience with fiberglass resin so yes i'm going to cut out some sheets try and get the right sizes made and then later on once pat's here I'll have a go at laying them in there with the polyester.
Okay guys, so what I've got going on now is I've got all my pieces cut out. You'll see I've actually gone and cut little like corners out of them so that now they've got flaps and where these flaps are line up with points like if you can see in here where these braces are that flap will fold over that corner there and the cutouts will allow for those blocks so they pretty much sit flat against the surface with room for these cutout bits of wood hopefully that makes sense and um, what I'm going to do once I've got all these pieces in is use some of these long sort of strip bits to r completely go like from the fiberglass on one wall round over to the fiberglass on the other wall so like in uh, on this back wall here the piece sits down on this face but there's this big long brace all the way along the back so it'll sit up against there the other piece will sit up against here and then I'll put a long strip like this one rounding over both of them over the corner so I've got all those pieces cut out and ready to go so now I'll just have to wait for Pat to show up so I can you know start mixing some of the resin together and have a go at it Please remember, I've never done this before. Okay, guys, so I can start doing some fiberglassing now. Let's get some gloves. And I'm going to take my Apple Watch off because the last thing I want is resin on the Apple Watch. Okay, so I guess the first step is probably to make up some solution. I'm going to need these things. My stirring stick. I wonder if I should be wearing the respirator for this. I think I will. Uh, uh, oh gosh. Okay, respirator on. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with 100 mils. Oh, it's blue. Woo. Okay, now I have to get 100 mils of that into there without making a mess. You're right. Oh yeah. Now the mark is there. How much is that? It's about 50. That. That's just a little over 100. That's cool. Okay. Now that's 100 mils. It's a 2% relationship. So I need 2 mils of this accelerator. Per Grant's recommendation, I'm going to try and pour some into the lid. And then use the syringe to get 2 mils. There we go. 2 mils. Pour that into there. Just a quick stir does it, eh? Don't need to do it for ages, it doesn't change colour or nothing. I can, I'm starting to smell it, so I suppose that's a good sign. This would be so annoying if this doesn't set. <laughs> Don't know why it wouldn't, but you know. We shall see, shan't we? I'm hoping this first batch of 100 mils is going to be enough to do the back wall. Reasonably liberal. Especially on the main section. Bit more over there. Okay, I think that'll do. Let's get the piece in there. There we go. Set down in there. Cool. Now I guess I could just might as well just pour the rest of this over it and just start rolling it in. I guess that's pretty much all of it. Hopefully that's enough. I might need more. We start by spreading it out relatively for the most part. Okay, I don't know if this is an issue, but how come when I roll it, like all the top layer of frizzy fiberglass is coming off with the roller? I'm not pushing hard, it's just like it comes up like hair off a dog. Doesn't look too bad for a first attempt. Probably. You probably could have had a bit more solution, being it's the biggest piece. Okay, there's yeah, it's air bubbles. Is it? You need more more on it. It doesn't matter. Oh. I just thought that's what where it wasn't like you know completely concentrated like. No. So you look around this side. It's just where you've got air underneath it. Okay. Mm. So I need basically a lot more solution. Mm. Well, it'd take me like two it's minutes up. to make up another hundred. Yeah, if it's going off. I'll give it a quick. I'll try to do a fifty. That was a hundred and that was enough to do like the back layer and most of the top. So I reckon 50 would be alright. Let's try and find the 50 mark. There's no 50 mark. I know, you just have to kind of go to halfway. How many drops of this should I do? 
I feel like two mils was quite a lot out of this little bottle. It's halfway down. That much. I'm eyeballing it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Stirring stick. I think a lot of experienced fiberglasses would probably agree that it really is kind of a bit of an art that you do by feel and measure and muscle memory. Not really something you can put down to a science. This is a first time for everything. This just happens to be mine. Put some in the corner there. Some in that corner. You have to put subtitles up. I think they can hear me. There we go, that'll do. Put that out. There we go, now she's sloshy. Oh yeah, there we go. Getting rid of some of it. Not all of it. Uh, the roller just sticks to it and lifts it up. I don't want to do that. It'll be interesting to see what it does on the RTV. Grant's pretty adamant that it's not going to stick to it. We shall see. I, I don't know if I'm doing this for way too long or what, but... Hey, what the hell, guys. I'm pretty happy with that, guys. I mean, I know the edges aren't perfect, but the whole point of this was to kind of to strengthen up the centre of this main panel. It's kind of like dynamite on a skin of metal, really. It's just designed to prevent it from flexing at all because of the fact that it is kind of thin. It's like 12mm MDF. Hopefully this uh, this fiberglass will strengthen it up to similar to 18mm or better. Obviously it's going to be real ugly on the inside. We shall see what it's like when it's dry, I think. Now I've got a bunch of stuff I need to try and clean because we haven't got any acetone. Cool. There you go, I've done a wee bit of cleaning up. This thing is getting set to dry. It's pretty ugly. I'm pretty happy for my first try apart from the edges. But I might, oh fuck it stinks. I might end up cleaning some of that off later on anyway. But the, I got the majority of the uh, main panel done pretty well I think. So hopefully I've got enough resin and activator left to do the bottom, the top and the two sides. I think I'll have to let this set. How long does the stuff take to cure? Working time will be a maximum of 15 to 20 minutes. Do not add catalyst to more than can be applied within. It doesn't say how long it takes to fully cure. I don't know. I, I think it'll probably set relatively jelly-like, you know, in the first half an hour or so, I'd say. So I might be able to leave this for a wee bit, let it sort of get a bit of a uh, grip, and then I could possibly turn it on its side and do maybe one of the sides or I could do the top um, or I could do the top face. So while this uh, fiberglass on the bottom level has been drying, I've done my tweeter pods. You guys will see them. No, you probably already have seen them. I'm not sure what order I'll release these videos in. But um, it's not fully dry, but it's dry enough now where I can do, I think, this side piece on the right-hand side. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay guys, so the sub box is pretty much done for the fiberglassing part. Um, I've gotten the back face, the bottom, the top, the, and the two sides done, completely fiberglassed. I was going to put some strips along these back ridges here, but just thinking about it now, I've since decided I probably don't even really need to bother with that. I think it's possibly just a wee bit overkill and just more work that I don't really need to do. Because it's got those strength braces in there anyway and realistically what more is it going to do so I think I'm just going to leave it. One interesting thing I did find is you can see, now this is obviously a combination of the bad quality of my work where there's lots of air inside the fiberglass and also I think a type, the type of epoxy I used, uh, sorry not epoxy, the type of resin I used. So I used um, like, like 500 mils of polyester resin from like my hardware store and I managed to get the back face, the top, the bottom and the one side done. I think, I don't know if I just wasn't being liberal enough with it or like not using enough, uh, you know, to get it to 
finish nicely. I think I did a better job on the top one. It's definitely a bit more see-through. But what I did for the last wall, this one here, I used, um, since I ran out, just a wee bit of works. I used 100 mils of works epoxy resin. And I thought we had polyester and that the one that we knew was working well was polyester, so that's where, why I went and bought it. Um, turns out we actually had epoxy and I really wish I had bought epoxy resin now because I just did this one last night and you can, hold on, let me flip it up, get some light in there. This is the wall that I did with the epoxy resin and as you can tell just by looking at the difference between the walls, the epoxy works so much nicer. Like, it's a nice glossy clear finish as opposed to this sort of satiny matte finish. Now I don't know if the reason this one's, these have got so much more white in them than this is because of, you know, the better resin or if it's because maybe just this wall is a lot more liberal with the amount of uh, resin actually used and that allowed it to bond better. But either way, I'm much happier with the uh, how that all turned out than I am any of the other ones. I guess it's all just a learning curve. Next time I know I really definitely want epoxy because it was much easier to work with, I have to say. Um, I don't know why, but I used the paintbrush just the same I did all the other uh, walls. And on all the other walls, every time I was like painting it with the paintbrush or dabbing it, it was making like lots of cat whiskers and like fluffy bits of fiberglass like you know balling up in the corners and all over the place but with the epoxy on this back wall it didn't affect it whatsoever it was basically just like painting paint on a wall it like it didn't move it around or make any bally bits of fiberglass anywhere so that's okay it's a learning curve next time I know epoxy resin so much easier to use so much well, to work with so much nicer finish in my opinion that's fine it's the box is done i'm pretty much i'm happy with how it's turned out so now i can take this masking off the next step is to run the wiring into it which i already have made up so i've got got my male speak on plug now this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have the cord coming out of the sub box and then the connector on the car so that when i take the sub box out of the car <coughs> excuse me there isn't like a cable just dangling there doing nothing. Rather than putting the connection on the box, I'm actually going to put it on the car side and the box is going to have a little cable coming out of it. So I've got my, uh, I've got my four pin speak on plug here. This is some five core 15 amp trailer cable. So there's five 15 amp cores in here. Obviously I'm only using four of them, but that means there's at least 30 amps potential to go to the positive and negative side of the subwoofer which I think will be plenty enough current for, well, should be plenty enough current in my opinion for the RMS of my amp, which is about 600 watts. I think it'll be good. So what I'm gonna do for this, I will put a, I'll put it on this metal plate here somewhere, obviously, because I don't want to put a hole in the nice box anywhere else. I'd rather just use the hole that's already there. So I'll put it somewhere around here, maybe in that gap there. And I think what I might do to make it kind of look nice is put like a rubber grommet or something in there for this to go through and then obviously on the back side of it it'll get completely sealed up with RTV and a cable tie to stop it moving around and things like that. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do now if I've got a grommet we'll see. Actually I really need the car to know how much length I need. But a car parked down the road. Maybe what I'll do is I'll get it in the box now get like the hole drilled and maybe get it through the grommet but I won't secure the cable or cable tied or RTB or anything like that just yet because I need to know how much length I actually need coming out of the box before I can do that. After that it'll just be a matter of filling it with Dacron and putting the T-nuts in. That's actually something I need to do. I need to go next door to the uh, bolt and screw shop and get myself some T-nuts and some bolts. Put those in, put the subwoofer in and then I do need to mount the panel uh, which I'm waiting on from my online supplier, my socket for this, because they messed up my order a wee bit. Um, I'm waiting on that, and then I can put that in the car and the wires to the amp, and sub will be going. So that's where we're at. OK, 
Okay, so I think I've found a way that I'm going to have the wire going through this metal panel here. I'm a wee bit concerned about the fact that this is all raised up bumps, and that may not mean it can sit quite flat. But I've found, I've got a couple of things on here. So to begin with, this black thing here is uh, like a plastic grommet thing, which comes with uh, amplifier wiring kits, and you are meant to drill a hole in the firewall and put that through it for the, for the power cable to go through. And then that red piece there, which I've got sort of sandwiched in between the cable that, uh, and the plastic thing, that is out of a fuse holder end, which seals the fuse, the power wire inside the fuse holder. So hopefully with those two together, it's already creating a pretty good seal. Obviously I'm going to RT bear in there anyway, but I think I'm probably going to try and mount, have the wire coming out of this flat sort of surface here. Or should I do it at the bottom? Ooh, the bottom's a bit tempting, isn't it? Actually, yeah, I think I might do it in the bottom, because that way it doesn't have to like loop down here and everything like that. I think I'm gonna try and do it right at the bottom. But I've got a bunch of stuff for drilling my hole. What I might try and do first, because looking at this, this is all pretty big. I don't know if this is gonna fit in that gap without it being bumpy. I need to try a couple things. That could possibly sit right in the center on its own. I think that would be better just with that on its own. So what I need to do is mark the middle of that. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm happy with that, yeah, because this uh, black thing, see if I try to put it there, it, whatever I do, it sits up on those ridges, so I don't think that would have worked. But this little red one seems all right. Let me have a look at the inside and see if I can see how far through it's going. Okay. That looks good, I'm happy with that. I mean, I know it's not in the center or anything like that, but having it down low is gonna be good because it means it can just duck straight out and plug into wherever it is I'm putting the panel. Uh, yeah, I do need to give this box a bit of a clean now. That masking tape is, and the uh, sanding has left a bit of dust and stuff on it, but no biggie. So next step, apart from uh, securing this on the inside with a cable tie and some RTV to seal it up, is to get some T-nuts and some bolts and put them in the back of the baffle here so that I can secure the sub in. Okay guys, so time to put the uh, T-nuts in for securing the subwoofer to it. I got that red bung thing glued in there now, so hopefully now when this is moving around and bumping, it's not gonna slowly wriggle itself out. I will get the length of that sorted once I put it in my car and cable tight and RTB on the inside. But for now, I can at least do the T-nuts, which if you are unfamiliar, uh, these things So I've got so these are basically female m5 threaded uh, Nuts essentially and I've got these sharp little fingers on the sides of them So that when you put them on the underside of wood and tighten it down this gets like pulled up into the the the, uh, the socket you can see that actually goes into the hole from the other side and the fingers go into the wood and lock it in there and then it also, once it's there, pretty much becomes a giant washer as well. So there's no way you can like pull it through. They're similar to threaded inserts, which you see Steve Mead using quite a lot on his builds. But the good thing about these is that with over tightening, they just, there's no such thing as being able to pull these through whatsoever. You would, you'd thread out the metal before you did anything like that. So these will be good. I've got 12 of them because I'm going way overkill and using 12 uh, 12 bolts for holding in my one 600 watt 12 inch sub so more is less essentially more more bolts is less worry um, I've widened these holes all out to six mils because I had them at five and a half I wasn't sure what it, they needed to be but they're now six mils so as you can see that little piece there with a bit of help will go into the wood and the way you pretty much put these in is you kind of position them from behind 
or actually what you can do, I've got this, these are the bolts I'm using by the way, they're 50 mil hex head M5 bolts and they're already anodized black which is quite nice or powder coated black. So if I put that bolt through there, like that, it's got a washer there to prevent it from causing any damage to the front. So if I put that there, and then, if you guys look there, I'm going to start threading this on. And I've got my bit here, which I'll put in the drill. So now this will slowly pull itself into the wood. Keep going. There we go, that's in as in as it's gonna get. Now if I loosen it, come back out. There we go. So now you guys should be able to see. Could go in a bit further, I haven't quite got it all the way in. And Grant's tip is when you're putting them in. Grant's tip. This is Grant's tip. You get a bit of noble nails and you just put a bit of noble nails around there so then when it goes in, it when you're undoing it, it doesn't push it back out. Because sometimes uh, that happens. Did it? Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Okay. That's just my wee tip. That's Grant's wee tip. Because if you're undoing yeah. and you've got weight on it and it's been vibrating for the last two weeks and you want to take it out and have a look at something. These here have loosened off in the middle. What you mean that? So you mean that big gunky brown stuff? Yeah. Fuck, that seems just a little bit on there. OTT. And then as it screws up, it squashes out around the sides. But at least when you're undoing this, it's not going to fall back out into the thing. Mm. I mean, I undid it just now, but I mean, it could go in a bit further because it's it looks like it's still got about another maybe a mil that could go in a bit tighter. There we go. That is definitely in the wood now. Okay, I'll uh, do 11 more real quick. There you go guys, there's, I just thought of this, there's an example of what they look like from behind, this is the baffle we have off her of a Focal 11 inch subwoofer that we can put on a 12 inch box. By the way, that's something you can do with these if you're building your box um, from scratch. Obviously I can't do it with my one since I can't take the front whole, whole front face off it. But you can get a little hole saw and drill down like a few millimeters and then use your flathead screwdriver or a chisel to pry out a layer of wood so that the uh, T-nut actually sits all the way in. That's good if you are putting this like straight on top of another baffle or something like that. But that's pretty much what they look like from behind. Now the next step definitely is to secure this cable in place in the right length, uh, to be it, seal it, and then fill the box with Dacron and then put the sub in. Do they look good in there? Sweet, yep they're good. Box is getting there. Hey guys, how's it going? I've uh, got my car oops, at work today, so hopefully I can figure out how long I want the subwoofer cable to be. So I need to open this up. Okay. So the sub is 
going to sit. Now to get in and out, kind of have to like lift this thing up a wee bit. It's going to sit in just. Oh, I said I've got the seats leaned back. One second. So that sits just there, just underneath the. Uh, There we go, that sits like that perfectly. Now this is the cable. So the cable, which is this here, I want to have it plug in right somewhere, I think here. Yeah. Obviously it needs to be somewhere where the seat doesn't go when it folds up, so. That's with the seat folded up. This would probably be easier with this thing out. Let's lay this down there. This is pretty much where this sits, so this can plug in up here somewhere, I think. It'll just go straight into the plug. Maybe it'd be better off going to plastic, I don't know. I just thought in there would be nice and out of the way. But anyway, what I'm going to do is pull this cable through so I get this the right length and then I can cable tie it and seal it with RTV. There we go, I think probably about there. I want it because now I've got enough cable to plug into there if I want or if I really think I need to put the, pl uh, the plug in the plastic I can reach all the way up to here so that's good that's where I'll have it so now I can take this back out and pack it inside cable tie it off in there and then seal it Yep, no, that's as tight as it's going to go, I think. So now, I cannot pull this back through whatsoever because the cable tie in there is securing it. Now I can RTV this as well to give it a bit of extra sealing, which I think will be a bit easier if I have this turned on its side. This is actually harder than it looks because I can't see shit. Oh, on gloves, so I'm just using a plastic bag to try and... Yep. There we go guys, got it all RTV'd up around the gap. It's a big ugly mess, but it will dry and it will be completely sealed. You can see that down there completely sealing the cable and the cable tie for that matter to the box. So that will dry overnight or hopefully by the end of the day and then I don't know maybe I'll get some time this weekend at home actually to um, put the Dacron in and mount the subwoofer. I won't be able to wire it up to the car straight away because I haven't got the plug yet for the, um, the other end of this cable. I'm still waiting on the female end, I think it is, to arrive uh, in the post because the people who I bought these plugs off, to be honest, they made an absolute shit show of getting me the right stuff. This, um, well, I ordered two parts at once, the male and the female. This one came first try. They, they sent the wrong other end of it. They sent like an XLR plug instead of the speak on one to begin with and it's literally taken like more than a week of emails and phone calling back and forth to them 
just trying to communicate what it is and then trying to figure out what I need. It shouldn't be that hard, but apparently it is. Um, so I won't be using them again, but I think they may have finally got the right one on the way to me now. But yeah, they've made an absolute shit show of it. So as soon as that arrives, I can mount it in the car and run wires from it to the subwoofer output of the uh, amp, plug it in and we'll be good to go. Good morning guys, how's it going? Possibly the last day finally working on the sub box stuff. So in the last video you saw I, oh, in the last section you guys saw I RTV'd once the auto camera, auto low light kicks in, come on. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I RTV'd this whole section where the cable comes out of it. Box is pretty much ready to go for the sub. So what I can do now is fill it with Dacron and then put the sub in and then clean up the box and the, the, the box will be done. It can go in the car. And I may actually be able to get it in the car today because the plug finally arrived for the speak on plug to plug into. This is actually quite a nice one, it's a Neutric. I don't know like what it's, I always thought it was pronounced Neutric but the people who sold it to me every time they're on the phone with me pronounced it Neutric. I don't know if that's right or not. But um, anyway, in the back here, if we fold the seat forward, this is theoretically going to mount somewhere around here. In through there somewhere, theoretically. Depends on how much depth we've got behind here. I think we'll be all right. But I have to take this panel off to see and everything, obviously. I'll either mount it, you know, straight through like that with the square showing, or I may even just cut a circle out and have uh, this pushed in from the back with like some nuts and bolts, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out when I do it. But I want to get the sub box done first. So let's put that down there. Oh, I'll show you how it connects on. If you haven't seen Speak On before, um, Speak On is the type of connection that they use for pretty much all big speakers like PA, ampli uh, PA speakers and everything like that so I'm highly confident that it's going to be able to handle the current basically they are four pin plugs obviously I'm just a single voice coil sub so I just use two pins per um, polarity side you know and so you just where is it it goes in like that just pushes in there's like a spring load a little bit there you push in and twist and then that bit clips in whoops and then, so now it's locked in, and then to get it back out again, you pull this and rotate to pull it back out. So it's cool because it like locks in. That's how that works. For the Dacron, I know where I can get it from, because we don't really have any excess Dacron lying around, or not enough, I don't think, for what I need. So I'm going to take it out of my Rocket Fosgate dual p315 box because i know that that is absolutely chocker with dacron so i'm going to take one of those subs out and steal some of the uh filler from there i was going to bring my 15 my 15s box out to the car and see what it looked like in the back of there just because i was curious but i forgot how freaking heavy this thing is like oh my god it's it's not the subs, it's the box. Um, I'll try and show you once I've got one of them out, but the entire inside of this huge ass box is resined and fiberglassed like crazy, like better than I've done that one because I got Grant to do, help me with this one and we did it really thick. And it's all, it's like double baffle on the front and all that wood is 22 mil MDF. So it's super thick, super heavy. Ridiculous. I'm going to take one of these subs out and uh, get some Dacron out for my wee box. That's what I had in my Legnum. That's what I'm going to. Slight difference. So let's take some of the, one of these out. And that's my bit. Bastard. As you can see, this whole box is just 
Put on, so here, you can see all the walls are fiberglassed, resined. There's a big support beam in the middle there, which is also fiberglassed. Top. Absolute beast. You can see how thick the baffle is here. It's like maybe 40 mils or something, I'm not sure. I think it's 22 plus 18 mil MDF on the front and then the rest of it's all 22. Anyway, here's some of the Dacron I want. Take that. Good thing about this Dacron is that um, if you put the right amount in a enclosure or a box, you can actually fool the subwoofer into thinking that the box is bigger than it really is because with this stuff in it, the air moves slower through it so it creates deeper notes and makes the sub box seem bigger to the subwoofer which is good when you're working with a tight enclosure like I am here uh, well it's a smaller sub box and really good if you're doing you know speakers and kick panels or some really small doors or things like that you know or weird enclosures but uh, yeah that's all I'll need I'll chuck this back in now still don't know what I'm going to do with these subs in this box I have had them I, I have thought about you know selling them haven't really put them up for sale, but if anyone asks about them, I, you know, say make me off, make me an offer, you know. Subs are still in, like, you know, good nick, because they've been looked after by a car audio professional, so they haven't been thrashed or anything like that, but they have been, they make a hell of a racket, but they haven't been abused. And the box is, like, crazy good. Not very well upholstered, I must say, but but very good quality on the inside. Now I've got my Dacron, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to really secure that in there anywhere or anyhow. Before I continue on that I do quickly need to install the stereo into a Suzuki Swift. Check back in with you in about an hour and a half. Before, there we go. Stereo installed, stereo controls all work by the way. Volume up and down, mute, mode works the source and seeking up and down. You can push it once for presets, or you can hold it for seeking. If you want to see how I did that, I did just quickly make a video on how to wire up Pioneer Stereo Control built-in decoders. If you want to check that out, click the link up there somewhere in the corner. But now we can get back to the legacy. Okay guys, it's finally time to put the subwoofer in the box. Ah, I've been waiting so long to do this. Okay, so first things first, I do need to cut this label to a bit of length. I've positioned the Dacron how I want it already. Got it shoved into the corners with a bit of room. Put the actual sub in here. Just need to make sure that goes all the way. The walls are anyway. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so length of this cable doesn't need to be that long. The terminals, where are they on the side? The terminals are at the bottom of the subwoofer which is like right here. So it really only needs to be like, well I like having it long enough to sit the sub out of the box. So I think I'll make it about there. That's probably all it needs to be. Shorter the better. There we go. Okay. Yeah, five cores, I only need four of them. We don't need the green one. It red and brown positive and yellow and white negative. Now, question is do I want to solder these? I could do. I think I might. What am I going to do? There we go. Okay. Time for the subby to go any. Ah, hello beautiful. Right. Positive. One.
Two. Now you guys are slightly in the way there. There we go. Rotate this till it lines up with the holes like that. Sweet. As. One, two. Who else thinks 12 bolts is overkill? Basically, I'm just, since I am working with a much lower power, amount of airflow and everything that I'm used to, like I'm going from 215s to this, and I'm working with a sub in a quite a small box. The best way to get bass out of a, uh, a small box and a smaller sub and half as many subs and half as much power, make the box really fucking good. If it's small, you just gotta make it good. It's not the size, mate. It's how you use it. I think for the last bit I might try and do it up just a tiny bit more with my hand because then you can go all the way that you know hand type feels good. There we go. Ooh. Already. Before I put the trimming on, I'm just going to do a quick pop test to make sure I got all the pins around the right way and everything. So if I've done this right. Those two should be positive and those two should be negative. That's good. That's good. That's all set up correctly. I can put the trim ring on. So that. For the fourth one, my tiny little plastic washer that came with it did break. I'm not really sure how or why, but it is a tiny little thing. So I'm just going to try and dab that back together with some super glue. There we go, one fixed washer. There we go. And with that, the sub box is officially complete. Done. Finally. All I've got left to do, clean it up a wee bit because it's got some dust and bits and pieces here and there from working on it. Um, I'm pretty sure I know how I'm going to secure it in the cars and, you know, tactical velcro strips. And after that all I have to do is install this plate, run the wires to the amp, and we'll be running today. I think I'll do that first, I'll do the securing of it last, I'll, um, and cleaning last. I'll do that wire running now and get it in and see if we can get some sand out of it. Looking good though. Okay guys, so the sub is in the box. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Looks mean, looks like a beast. That's gonna bump. So, now that that's ready to go in, I need to mount the panel and do some wiring. So, give me five minutes to pull all this apart. I'll get the floor out and I'll get this whole panel off. And we'll see where we can mount it. Or I might actually not take it all the way off, but I'll just get it loose so that I can like pull it out and see where I can, you know, insert the connector up there somewhere. Time lapse. Right, okay, that took me a bit longer than I expected, but I had to figure out where I was going to put the plug on this thing. And I really wanted to make it, if possible, so that the seats, well, so that the seat can still lean all the way back if it wants to, without, like, damaging the cord. Because the seat won't lean all the way back when the sub is sitting in position, that's fine, I can move the subwoofer. But I'd like to be able to lean it all the way back to its maximum position without having to unplug the subwoofer, you know what I mean? So that's what I did. So I figured out I'm going to put the plate, the connection up 
around here. Like this arrow here is where the bar sits and this is where the main crossbeam thing sits and then I'm going to put it up here. You can see the lines I've marked how far back the seats go. In fact I don't think I will be able to put the seats all the way, I'm not sure really now. I honestly can't remember but I've decided I want it in the plastic up here. So I think the first thing I should do is run some wires from the amp around to here. I also need to fix the LEDs because they're falling down again. I think I might need to put a couple of dabs of super glue on the back side of this piece here. It keeps falling down. So yeah, game on. interrupt the time lapse for a quick minute just to show you guys like kind of how I've done a couple things. I've got the speaker wire runner, fixed those LEDs and uh, I've got the terminal mounted in the panel here. So the speaker wire pretty much just ducks straight back into that panel there and then it goes all the way underneath the plastic, pops out, comes up and then it splits off into four 15 amp cables which will, oop, the lights are just turned off because of time. Um, and those will plug into the back of the connection which I've put there. And I was actually really lucky, I managed to find four little tiny countersunk uh, bolts. Now M3 bolts, they're tiny as, and we don't have any M3 nuts. But then I found what went with them. If I lift this up, you can see I've got those four bits of metal there. So those used to be are there any more in here? I think that might have been it. They used to be some wings that came with the Focal kits for securing the um, securing the tweeter in. So lucky for me, I was able to find those little M3 bolts because we haven't got anything like so small and countersunk that would fit into these holes here. But now at least it looks really nice. There's one of the ends that I've cut off, you know. So now I pretty much just put this back in and uh, get the subwoofer mounted in place. You may have saw I already did a test um, to make sure that sound does come out of it, which it does. We'll have a play with it and see what we can get out of it once this is all back together. boot back together. I also, um, while I was putting back together, decided to do a quick retune of the amp just on the subwoofer side, just to make sure that the output settings on it are just, you know, completely maxed out, i.e. The, the subwoofer gain and the um, EQ curve and the settings on the head unit, just making sure that they're maximized for optimum efficiency without any distortion or clipping. That's why I love these amps, because they have that set up in them to detect that. So now, I am about to put the subwoofer box in place and I'm going to do some tactical belt growing to get it to stay there. What I think I do need to do first is give it a quick clean. Let me just clean it first. There we go, I gave it a decent clean with some meths and some wax and grease remover. Got rid of pretty much all of the marks and imperfections on the back of it, just like dust and stuff that had occurred. And I've also given it a coat of the uh, CRC 808 silicone because on painted boxes and on subwoofers especially, it makes them pop out really nice and glossy. As you can tell, everything's real shiny about it now. Nice and shiny. 
Now, as I was going to do, I need to do some Velcroing. Let's bring this over here. Okay guys, so it's in, looking all beautiful, apart from this mat looking all ugly, but at least the sub subwoofer looks beautiful, fits really nicely, like exactly right. My battery was getting pretty low, so for a wee bit I'm just going to have it on the charger. Something interesting about putting these battery terminals on, now it's actually a wee bit <laughs> annoying to have to charge my car. So I put the negative of the battery charger down onto the engine block, and the positive I take off my uh, fuse box cover and hook it to the great big 120 amp fuse because they just can't get a grip on these great big uh, Rockford Fosgate terminals. But oh well. So while this is charging up for a wee bit, I need to have some lunch and stuff because I haven't eaten all day. And I'm going to do a tidy up because I've made a huge mess of the place. So that's what I'm going to do and charge the GoPro at the same time. Okay guys, I've uh, had the charger on for a wee bit. Still sitting around 10 amps so it actually does need a decent charge up. Um, I might put it back on boost real quick for a wee bit, but I'm going to have a sit in and have a listen to it now and get my reaction to how I think it sounds. Now, please, now do remember with the subwoofer I have been trying to get SQ, not SPL, so sound quality over pressure level, which is exactly what I'm, you know, like I said, I'm trying to get sound quality, not absolute maximum volume. So you're probably not going to be able to, it's not going to like, you know, make the microphone distort or anything like that, like the 15s in my Lignum did, but hopefully it should sound nice and clean. So we'll listen to a song on my SD card because those are the best quality. Okay, let's go to the bassy song. We'll go to, um, Gangsta's Hopefully I don't get copyrighted again like I did last time. I'll try and I'll have to cut this up a wee bit. So that you, it's not gonna sound good, I'm gonna have to cut it up so you don't get copyrighted. too hard it will still be in the wearing period uh, let's just try the other song that I really like Hotel California Eagles awesome song for testing Okay guys, sorry about that, I had to um, help a customer code in an alarm remote and Pat left the lights on on the van again so the battery was flat and had to get it jumped. I'm on my way home now, seems like a good place to test the music out. And also it warms the sub up as well, 
not sure how long the GoPro is going to stay in its current position because I've kind of I've got it for the, on the mount for this kind of sloppily set into an actual GoPro mount on the windscreen. I don't know why I didn't grab a GoPro attachment from my case while I was at work, but oh well. Yeah, so far it hasn't fallen out. Like, oh, sorry, so far the subwoofer hasn't uh, felt like it's moved, so that's good. Let's have a listen. The audible difference in this car is a lot different to what it was in the Lignum with the subwoofer like up or down or on or off, you know what I mean? Oh, I was going to turn in here actually, we'll get a car wash while we're here, Judy needs a wash. Judy's been needing a wash ever since I took her to Henna, she's got bugs all over her. Right, let's get a wash. I really like this, um, this car wash here at Mobile because it's a touch free one like it doesn't have any spinning bits it all works off water blasters so there's no bits which like touch your car at all okay okay seems like a good spot to have a listen to some music we, we heard gangsters paradise I didn't really get a chance to listen to hotel california properly without the sub and then with without with it's just the absolute bottom end so that's without when I turn it down the speakers already make quite a bit of bass because that's without that's with and obviously like the with subwoofers, they do take a wee bit of time to sort of uh, wear in and get loose and keen to move. At the moment, it'll still be quite stiff because I haven't really played it at all. Um, I'll have a listen to it. What's gone on? What's happened? The machine has stopped for some reason. I felt something hit the car. Let me do more wipers on. Oh, it's gotten jammed. Um, guys. Look, that machine is not supposed to be like that. Um, that thing has gotten stuck up there. Wonder if I can get the attention of anyone. Um, is there a number in here? Sometimes they have a, cell, a number in here you can call. This is really awkward. <laughs> I could probably just drive out, I think. I think I might drive out. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. Please don't start on me while I'm getting out. Something. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll go park over here and ask and tell the lady what happened. I'll uh, go explain what happened. Okay, so uh, we're not really sure what happened there, but um. She's getting me a new code for another wash. Not really sure what happened. That's honestly like, it, of course, the first time I film while well, going through there is the first time that happens, because that has never happened before. I honestly don't know what happened, what it was. Let me just check my front bumper again. Okay, there we go. We got another code. We're gonna try this again, round two. Where it normally foams more than that. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, music. I'm just watching it because I don't want this to happen again. <laughs> In case it's donking my car. There's the second coat of foam. Okay, I think we're all good now. Anyway, music. And um, play. It sounds good. It has. It's happened again. I heard it, it hit something and got stuck and now it's 
Okay. Twice in a row. There's clearly something wrong with this machine. I'm gonna have to like get a refund or I don't know something. Can I get past there? It's like right in the way. Try and drive out again. I think. I'm gonna go backwards this time because I don't want to run into that thing. I'm gonna ask this guy if he saw what happened because he was right next to my car when it happened. Did you see what happened? Okay, he couldn't really be fucked helping me out. He's like, I don't know. I don't see anything. I didn't fucking see anything. Right, right, go ask for a refund. Hopefully I'm gonna get a refund or something because that machine is broken, which is really annoying because I like that machine. As I've said, it doesn't, it's supposed to not touch your car because it's only water jets and no actual brushes. Okay, well I got another wash to use another time. I'm not doing it now. And I've only got until the, I've got to the 24th of May to use it. And it's the 24th of um, April. So I get a month to use it. I'm sorry, but that's pretty bad service. They really should be refunding me or something. It stalled twice on my car and they're giving me something which expires. And now I have to go and, you know, actually rinse off my car somewhere. Well, this has been an interesting turn of events. Go in there for an audio test. Come out of it feeling pretty unhappy. I can't go forward there, mate, because you've got to parked your RX-8 right in the way, you ignorant dick. Mr. RX-8 gets priority, apparently. Well, I'm going home, and I'm going to have to wash my car off with hose. Well, after that big debacle, I suppose you guys want to know what I think of the subwoofer. I'm happy. Yep, it's, I mean, it's kind of hard going into a single 12 in a small box when you've come from dual 15s in the big box, because you kind of expect a bit more, I think. And it definitely feels like less than I was expecting, but I swear that's probably just because I'm used to having two 15s. So, and as I always say, it's like, I mean, I'm not trying to get SPL here, I'm trying to get sound quality, and it's definitely got that going for it. So I'm gonna go home and wash my car with a hose. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this probably extensively long video. It's been a mission, well, you know what I mean. It's been a long time coming, getting that sub box all, you know, prepared for the subwoofer, getting it, uh, getting the, making the trim ring, fiberglassing it, putting all the wiring in, stuff like that. It's been a long, long time coming and I'm glad to finally have it. Next step, I can't wait to finally get sound editing in this car and eventually the F3 speakers with the mid ranges. So thank you guys for watching. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in the next video. Kakita.